Thank you. <laughs> Three. Good morning, birds. Good morning, trees. Oh, what a lovely day. The sun's so big. It hurts my eyes, but really, that's okay. During Les Mis, the barricade scene was just really cool, um, really cool part of the show. And all the stage managers would gather stage right and just have a stretching session and chill out during the barricade scene. In Shrek, at the end of Act One, um, when we hold that last chord um, on Boy B, that's, that's a pretty, it was pretty cool. Nice moment right here. Right here. My name is Megan Hartman and I graduated from North in 2003. I'm also the daughter of David Hartman, your scenic painter for so many years. Uh, so feel free to tell my dad hi if you see him there tonight. My senior year, we did Les Mis. So that was back in 2003, the first time that North did it. And the rights to uh, perform that show at high schools had just come out earlier that year. And I remember Mr. Parker was so determined to do that show. And he was so confident that we could do it. And a lot of us doubted him. And we were like, yeah, okay, we're going to do Les Mis. Sure, Parker. Um, but we did it. And I think his confidence really helped us realize how uh, amazing that show could be. So, I know this is really weird, but I loved the super long days of one act rehearsal where you, where everyone like gets up in the hallway and like sets and strikes the set. Like for some reason, that was a lot of fun and I loved it. Being involved backstage during musical wet tech, this sounds kind of crazy, but I really, really loved it a lot because everything is so high energy. You have to be flexible and adapt to what's going on. And that was just always really exciting for me. I'm not going to lie, cleaning out drama storage in retrospect in retrospect because at the time no no but that's probably one of my favorite memories uh for my senior year we did phantom showcase and one act at the same time which was extremely stressful probably the most stressful two weeks of my life but it was also the most rewarding even though the chairs didn't make it onto the stage and we were all kind of freaking out about that it was so everything else went so smoothly. So during midsummer, I was the fog machine operator and during sectionals I thought I'll unplug the fog machine early because I'll be self-sufficient and it will help with strike. It will be quicker. And I saw a cord and I pulled it thinking it was my fog machine. And then behind me all the lights went off. And I heard the actors kind of stop like they were surprised for a moment. And then they went on with their lines and went, oh my god, and plugged it back in, and the lights came back up. And then during notes, Parker said, oh yeah, and, and the lights went off. It was so weird. The lights went off in the middle of the play. It must have been a little power outage, and I just was like. Let's see. Anytime a bliss light was turned on, I'm all, all for that. Um, let's see. There's a siren going, so I'll just wait. I'm sorry. I'm recording in Hyde Park. There's a lot of sirens. Uh, after one act state with Secret in the Wings, you know, waiting for for uh, the judge to come out. When she came in to the little room and announced that we had one Critics Choice, you know, that I think that was the first time I ever cried like real tears of joy. Um, being a cadet in Cyrano, where like all we ever did was wander on stage, cheer, laugh, and eat. Um, little baby snacks cut up to look French and uh, rolls filled with cheese whiz. Some of the favorite moments aren't even with um, your own kids because you start to just care about all the kids and you're just so happy for them when they accomplish something or hit their marks or hit that song, hit that note. 
I really enjoyed Secret Garden and being um, a dancing flower. We can never get yelled at because we had the black masks on. Anybody who's ever had to wear those black masks, you know Parker can't recognize you if you're dressed in all black, so he can't yell at you by name. He can just yell at you by task and how you were doing it wrong, but he doesn't know which one you were. Helping uh, Molly on her dragon costume, and then also seeing the scene transition, seeing all the run crew uh, run back and forth with all the set pieces. Fiona uh, transferred from herself into her ogre form at the end of the scene. There were five or six girls just clustered around her with all this makeup and costumes and wedding dress flying all over the place. Showcase for Phantom. Running into the theater at Whitewater and seeing everything, like it was a real theater. They had a dressing room for girls and a different one for guys and I had a shower in it. When Josh saying bring him home during Les Mis. That was also absolutely gorgeous and that happened after my dad passed away and it was just very touching and I almost felt like he was there too. Uh, definitely, definitely secret in the wings um, because you know it was such a beautiful abstract show you know it escaped reality and it, it transcended you know real life but you know the characters even though they're you know really wacky too they had some of the yeah had some of the realest emotions and realist life lessons you know buried in them charlie williams compositions were genius i think for that show i still listen to them i love the music he made for that show you know as like a group of high schoolers we were really lucky to have such an artistic show. But I have to say Argonautica, it was just beautiful and the lines that I have forever in my brain are just so fun to to kind of think about and like play as an inner monologue in my head while I go through life. That would definitely be Argonautica. I managed it and it was so much fun. The cast and the crew and just the show in general was just fantastic. I would say Journey to the West was my favorite show. Like, overall. Because, like, it had a nice vibe throughout the show, and um, Argonautica was my favorite visual show. Hands down, it was Metamorphoses. Um, as you all probably know, um, Mary Zimmerman has a way with words. She's amazing. Probably Metamorphoses because we had the the pool on stage, which was so cool. When I got to get in the pool, it was still warm. It wasn't heated during the show, so it cooled down. The Mary Zimmerman shows are so lyrical and wonderful and great. So they would, they would go in the pool and they would get wet, but then they would need to be dry for later scenes. So Anna and I would rollerblade across the school to like the where the pool is in the gyms and we would have to like dry the clothes and then rollerblade them back and it was just it was a really fun show to be a part of what was your favorite show to be a part of and why i have I have, there, I mean, mm, mm, mm. Midsummer was amazing, because it was probably one of my favorite roles, but that's not even true, because I loved, I loved, uh, I don't know, that's such a mean question, because, like, how, oh. It's like a Parker life lesson. You don't talk crap until you're on the bus and the doors are shut. At one act, only positive feedback until you're on the bus and the doors are shut. And then we can talk about what we hated about that. Um, and that just as a life lesson, you should never talk crap where people can hear you. Being like, that wasn't that good. Like, don't even. Just save it. Wait until they can't hear you. What was your favorite Parkerism? Boohingy. Boohingy. Um, probably just like, Bohungi. Like, what is that word? I, like, it's engraved in my brain now. Like, I, like I, that's like a tattoo that like I want to get on, like right here, you know? Bohungi. Uh, the face he makes when he catches you doing something very stupid. 
is that his voice is always so booming even when he isn't mad. Like five or six people came up to me and was like, Cammy, Parker is really mad at you. He was yelling your name. And I was like, oh great. So I go into Parker's room. I said, hey Parker, I heard that you needed me. He's like, oh yeah, I just wanted your opinion on this fabric. Do you think the pink one or the white one? That moment when he or someone comes up with a great idea that uh, solves a problem in a show or creates a great character moment. And the second he learns about that idea, he expresses it with an ah! When, Parker, when you yell, stop, stop, and you get angry and want to pause, and then the next sound out of your mouth is just like a yeah! Ben Vo was openly mocking Parker's ability to do martial arts because Parker brags about it all the time, like, he thinks he's pretty cool. Parker got up from his desk, walked over, said, Ben, give me your hand, and Ben did. He was like, what, what are you doing? And Parker just flipped him flat on his back on the floor. It was hilarious, and it also sounded very painful. I played one of the little Richard III's nephews that uh, were murdered. We needed to be carried off stage because it the audience was right on stage, but if we walked off stage, it would have looked strange. Parker was telling our murderer to just like, you know, throw them over your shoulder and carry them off. And he just like, he didn't understand what Parker was looking for, so Parker's like, okay. Grabs me, throws me over his shoulder, and marches around the common. I think that Mr. Parker really truly speaks from the heart when it comes to like the message of Shrek, that feel free to be who you are and whoever you want to become, and that we will all be here to support you, and I think that's a very cool thing to be a part of. It's actually, it's a haunted house story. We're told that it was a requirement as drama club officers to prank him, and then we'd sneak up on him and we'd just whisper over the headset that there was a big Newton monster. There's a big Newton monster. It's one day in Peter Pan, we had up the silhouette screen, right? And I was kind of dancing behind it, you know, doing my jig, doing my jam and then Parker, sitting out in the audience, just barely being able to be heard by people around him, puts his head in his hand and just says, when I die and I go to purgatory, it will be filled with thousands and thousands of Duncans. Um, favorite Parker story. <laughs> my favorite Parker story. What's my favorite Parker story? During Les Mis, Parker told us explicitly not to walk on the slip stage while it was moving. Parker was walking up on stage because so he was really frustrated that we couldn't get this cart to wheel around the right way. And he, he has this like dead set, I'm going where I want to go walk, and he kind of like just walks straight up. I must do this mindset. Like he walks with his head forward and he's got business to do. He's like walking on stage to, you know, maybe yell at an actor. He comes on stage, didn't realize that the turntable was going. And the next moment, the slip stage is moving and Parker steps onto it and falls flat on his back. Steps on the rotating stage and face plants. And he just wipes out. He takes one step and then you just hear this massive thud. And he'd get up and be like, I'm fine guys. I'm fine. We got a demonstration of why not to walk on the slip stage while it was moving. I was a freshman at North when Mr. Parker first started teaching there and he always had such a passion and a vision that I think I really admired. Mr. Parker started this improv group that that uh, became known as Improvity so I got to do that for three years and that is uh, still one of my favorite memories I think of high school just because we laughed so much at, in those rehearsals and at those shows. Definitely a sense of community I, I have gotten from the theater program. Um, it's provided me with a whole network of friends, um, just a nice trampoline for me to bounce on when I'm sad, if that's a great analogy. Well, my theater friends were my high school experience. And I was, I was really depressed in high school and it gave me a reason to get up in the morning and it gave me um, a reason to go to school because without theater I, I wouldn't have, to be honest. It was my friends and where I put all my effort and where I did my homework and where I ate the vast majority of my meals. So it was, it was my home. That's, that's what it was. 
the theater program is the largest learning environment I've experienced. I've I've learned more through theater than I have through anything, and it's just been incredible. It made me really thoughtful of how people in the world, you know, how they behave, why they say the things they do. You know, I listened to everyone like they were reading from a script, and, you know, I was thinking, you know, what events in their life are motivating them, you know, shaping their personality, blah, blah, blah. I've gotten 20,000 other moms and dads in my life, people that I can go to and talk to if I ever need help. I know that they're there for me. I have props with my face on it. <laughs> One of them, probably my favorite moment for me acting in a show that wasn't a dramatic thing, was one of the shows where I had a prop with my face on it. I was an improver and then I had like this ball with my face that got decapitated when I died because I couldn't make this princess laugh. And Mary Zimmerman went to see the show because she does that and I got to belly dance. So here I'm not sure how much the camera sees, but basically I was just teaching her some like basic belly dance techniques. Like this, this is the crescent turn right here. You just like twist and go like this, like a crescent. Oh, and it's also great because now you know when something happens because you always remember what show you were in and doing it on. So like you have a built-in calendar. It's was sometimes more educational than whatever we were learning about in school at that time. Um, all the stuff in Crucible, that ended up being the question on the AP test, which was awesome. It's just, it's an unbelievable experience. I've been having so much fun, and it's, it's pretty spectacular. It made me very responsive to my own name. Like, I think I've actually had nightmares about, like, Parker. This is Erin Oakley, and I'm a senior, and I'm involved because I'm I need, in theater since my junior year. I need Joey to... <laughs> now when I hear my own name, I was like, what? what needs to be done? What? I got this. So that's exciting. Way to go, Parker. You've made me more neurotic than I already was. I think theater just gave me a confidence. It was um, a confidence that I brought into my into college. Yes, it completely defined what I wanted to do. I'm going to be a stage manager professionally. <laughs> North Theater specifically taught me work ethic and that you have to work hard to get something good. It's the number one thing I got out of theater is knowing how to work hard and manage my time and get stuff done. The drama days actually affected me too. I learned that I love to teach people about theater and it brings me a ton of enjoyment. Uh, still to this day, my theater experience from high school I think is influencing who I am. I just a couple weeks ago uh, graduated from Arizona State University. So I now have my MFA in theater for youth. I also majored in theater when I got my undergraduate degree. I didn't quite know how I wanted to use that degree, but I really loved working with kids. I realized that there was a way to combine the two, and so I've been a teaching artist for many years. I'm a director who's getting ready to direct Shakespeare in the summer. Sound familiar? But more specifically than that, Appleton North's theater program and Ron Parker taught me the importance of ensemble. Of It's not about the director, it's not about the actor, it's not about the designer, it's about everyone working together to bring these characters and the story to life. As Parker and Shakespeare are always, always, always telling us, the play's the thing. I really believe in the power of educational theater. I believe in the North Theater program. I think that as a person it made me much more confident. It made me able to speak my mind. It made me excited about the world and excited to experience new things. And I guess that is totally Appleton North Theater to thank for that. So, love you guys. If you spend as much time studying as you do at practice, you will definitely succeed at college. Whatever you do after you graduate, you are going to be amazing. And the reason that I feel like I know this is because if you participated in the theater program, you gained so many skills and so many amazing experiences that I think will help you in whatever you do, whether it's theater related or not. Uh, but know that you can do anything and you'll be awesome at it. So just go out there and kick butt. So my advice for you seniors going out into the world after you graduate is to not be afraid to fail. 
I think we are taught from a very young age that success is the only option, and I don't believe that for a second. I think that the fear of failure keeps us back. I think it keeps you from trying new things and finding something that could really be something you really enjoy. So as you go out there into the world, don't let the fear of failure keep you back. Don't let it um, take away from anything that you want to try and you want to do because I believe in what you can do. I've seen you do wonderful things. Oh god, this scene is a zero for the freshman. When I was a senior, that's so cute, you guys. The people that you meet, the experiences you'll have, stuff that you'll learn from will be just as wonderful and enriching as these years at North have been. I promise you they will be. And I love that I'm starting to get to know you guys as people and not little dumb freshman wieners, but you still kind of are. I think you'll always kind of be Dumb little freshman wieners. I remember that I was very sad at the banquet, but the great thing that I learned is that everything North Theater gave you will stay with you in the world. You will find passionate people and people who are dedicated, and those are the friends you will seek, those are the careers you will seek, is something you care about. Congratulations, 2014 graduates! And if you decide to do theater, you still have to do morning matinees, and people will be very happy about it. Right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Yay, theater! Congratulations and thank you very much for all of these wonderful years of excellent theater productions. It's a difficult thing to be in an Appleton North production. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, it's exhausting, it's exhilarating, but it's wonderful. And so even if you never come back, even if you never see an Appleton North production, you're still a member of this theater program, and I want to say thank you. Congratulations, seniors of 2014. You are off to new and exciting things, but always remember the lessons that you learned in the last four years of school. Here to explain my three favorite Parkerisms is the man himself, Mr. Ron Parker. Good to see you, Ron. Good to see you as well, Vinny. How are you doing? I'm good. I feel like I can call you Ron now. Is that okay? Yeah, no, call me Parker. Yep, all right. So, uh, lesson one is that, you know, life can be kind of scary. But always remember the self-defense you learned from this man right here. Isn't that right? Yeah, I'll actually show you my favorite move. Attack me with this pen. Alright, we'll do this. I know this one. Ready? Yep. Boom! Boom! Alright, still got it, huh? You betcha. Lesson number two is that, you know, life can be pretty crazy. You know, it's kind of fast. It gets kind of hectic. But you should always remember that you can always... Stop! 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 That's it. Alright, lesson number three is that you should always be yourself. No matter what you want to wear, what you want to drink, eat, anything, be yourself. Even if it means you're always wearing plain sweaters and drinking Diet Mountain Dew. It works out for you. I do rock the look. Thank you very much, Ron. Congratulations, seniors of 2014. Take it easy.